Hello everyone. Thank you for joining today for this product management talk. I'm Chitra Chakravarti. I'm a PM lead at Microsoft and today I'm going to talk about identifying user needs for product development. So let's get started. Uh, so this is what we are going to cover today. First, we will know why being customer centric is so important. Second, we will see how to go about understanding your customers. And third, we will go through an approach to prioritize the right problems to solve. Finally, we will touch upon a little bit upon uh, the problem solving approach as well. Why customer centricity is important at the first place. First of all, definition of the customer centricity. Being customer centric means that a business places the customer at the center of everything it does. It's a strategy that prioritizes understanding the customer's needs, wants, and preferences, and tailoring products and services and experiences accordingly. A customer-centric business is focused on building long-term relationships with its customers by delivering value and meeting the, their expectations in every touch point. Now, why putting customers first is so important? There are several reasons why being customer-centric is important for businesses. Firstly, it helps with building customer loyalty, which can lead to repeat business and positive word-of-mouth recommendations. Secondly, it helps businesses to stay competitive by differentiating themselves from other companies that may not be prioritizing the customer experience. Thirdly, it can help to identify areas for improvement and innovation, as customers are often the best source of feedback and new ideas. Finally, a customer-centric approach can lead to increased revenue and profitability. Uh, as the happy customers are, are the most likely to spend more and more and stay loyal with the company over time. Adding some facts over here, uh, according to a study by Deloitte, the customer-centric companies are 60% more profitable than the companies that are not focused on the customer. Giving some examples from the industry, uh, number one, Starbucks. Starbucks is well known for its customer-centric approach to businesses. One example of this company's mobile app, which allows users to order and pay for their uh, drinks in advance, saving time and stream, uh, streamlining the ordering process. The app allows users to customize their orders and save their favorite drinks for easy reordering for the next time. It helps them, uh, the Starbucks, to stay uh, competitive by differentiating themselves from other companies in this market. The second one is Zappos. Zappos is an online shoe and clothing retailer. It's famous for its customer service. The customer, uh, the company has a wow philosophy, which means that it aims to provide easy customer, uh, uh, every customer with an uh, exceptional experience that goes above and beyond the expect expectations. Zappos offer uh, free shipping and returns, a 365-day return policy, and 24-7 customer uh, service hotline, which is staffed by a friendly and knowledgeable representatives who are empowered to make the decisions and solve the problems for the users on the spot. Uh, the next one is Walt Disney. Walt Disney is known for uh, its de dedication for creating magical and memorable experience uh, for its guests, guests, as we know, as we all know. The company places a strong emphasis on customer service with a team of cast members who are trained to go above and beyond to create a positive experience for all the guests that, uh, that uh, those visit them. Disney also invests heavily in the R&D to create new attractions and experiences that appeal to its uh, uh, new customers, keeping them coming back again and again to them. In all of these three companies, uh, the customer service is uh, customer experience is something that is prioritized. They invest in creating memorable and personalized experiences for their customers. By doing so, they have been able to build strong brand loyalty and create a competitive advantage in their respective industries. So, how do you go about understanding your customers? In order to build a successful product, it's crucial to understand your customers. In this slide, we will discuss three key ways to gain a deeper understanding of uh, your customers. One is identify your target audience. Two, uh, create, uh, create customer personas. 
and the third one is con by conducting customer service and interviews the first step is to identify your target audience who are the people who will benefit the most from your product or service what are their pain points goals and preferences to answer all of these questions you can analyze your existing customer data conduct market research and consult with your sales and marketing teams once you have identified your target audience the next step is to create customer personas a customer persona is a detailed profile of your ideal customer based on research and insights uh, uh, you can create customer per, uh, personas to better understand the needs and motivations of your different uh, different customer segments and tailor your product development strategies according to that finally conducting customer service and interviews it can provide valuable feedback and insights from your target audience this feedback can help you identify areas for improvement in your product or service as well as uncover new opportunities and trends in your market overall understanding your customer is essential to building a successful successful product by identifying your target audience creating customer personas and conducting customer service and interviews you can gain valuable insights into the needs and preferences of your customers and use that information to create products that truly meet their needs it's important to define your target audience in this slide we will discuss three key steps to help you define your target audience the first step is to conduct con uh, conduct research and gather analytics data this may involve analyzing your existing customer data conducting market research and consulting with your sales and marketing teams you could also look at our social media and go uh, google analytics insights to get this information by gathering this information you can gain a, be a better understanding of your customers demographics behaviors and preferences the second step is to identify patterns and common commonalities among your target audience this may involve looking for similarities in age gender income location or other relevant factors by identifying patterns you can create more accurate and detailed profiles of your target audiences you can segment the users based on any of these factors for example by age you could segment the users as children young adults el uh, elders or you could uh, or rather you could uh, segment them as uh, different generations gen z's millennials baby boomers etc you could also segment uh, users based on their activities their professions or the jobs they need to get done or uh, or maybe by their be behaviors or their motivations to do certain tasks we will see an example of this in the next slide the final step is to create profiles of your target audience these profiles also known as bio personas uh, should include detailed information about your customer goals pain points and preferences bio personas are fictional characters that represent real users it could be a typical user of your product uh there could be multiple buyer personas depending on how many uh, target segments you have by creating profiles you can uh, better understand the needs and motivations of different customer segments and tailor your products uh, uh, strategies according to uh, those needs so let's look at uh, uh, look at an example of the target segments by glancing at these few examples you can see that these uh, people may need the same gardening supplies uh for the gardening that they are doing so let's say we are building an app uh looking at these customer personas we might think that oh these all are like involved into gardening and they might need they might have same challenges or pain points uh but their motivation their problems and the challenges they are facing is very different if you look closely uh and again it is okay to target multiple customer segments but you should be clear on which segments you are going to solve for your product here we have identified customer uh, into four segments here customer 1 is a passionate gardener customer 2 uh, is a home stager customer 3 is a healthy uh, lifestyle seeker and customer 4 is an entrepreneur here customer uh, customer 1 is a pas is passionate about gardening and they do this as a uh, as their job, hobby uh they want to make their garden look beautiful and show it as uh, to their friends and family customer 2 wears 
is someone who is gardening to save money by growing their own vegetables and living a healthy lifestyle with that. Customer three is more focused on living a sustainable lifestyle and prioritizes organic food instead of buying it from the supermarket. They're not necessarily focused on saving money through, through this, but this is a, an investment to lead a healthy and sustainable lifestyle. Finally, the customer four is, uh, is into ag agriculture business. They might be a farmer or a supply manager and looking into uh, commercializing this through gardening. Overall, well, initially it looks like they all are into gardening. While we look at the different customer segments, we realize that they might have very different needs and pain points. Therefore, it is important to identify and determine which customer segments we are targeting through a product when we are building uh, such products. Uh, let's look at an example of customer uh, profile. Um, once again, product personas or customer profiles are fictional characters that represent real users with, uh, within your target segment. So let's say uh, you've launched uh, launching a product for easy user onboarding for a B2B app. You will uh, put a name for the persona and the demographics. This helps bringing all of the stakeholders on same page about the typical user and telling the, uh, the story about uh, user uh, that we are building the product for. So let's say uh, John is a middle-aged man who works at a mid-side uh, organization. He's a customer success manager and uses uh, your product for creating user onboarding experiences and enable users to achieve their goals with the contextual in-app guidance and resource uh, resource center self-help uh, materials. We will also put our hypothesis about their jobs to be done, their challenges uh, they face while trying to achieve uh, these jobs to be done. And we will get into uh, more details about uh, for understanding what jobs to be done are, but please note that I'm saying that this is a hypothesis we will, uh, and we will validate this through our uh, user service. For John, the jobs to be done are user uh, onboarding new users, increasing the user retention rate, increase user satisfaction, reduce the uh, support ticket volume for the company, and decrease the churn rates. The challenges are uh, it is uh, the user onboarding is very time taking. Customer uh, customers want uh, personalized onboarding guides, uh, and the request uh, that they, that he receives from the customers is often very redundant. And all of this is our hypothesis for now. So now, uh, what is jobs to be done? And how do we discover it for a user persona? Customer uses products to get the jobs to be uh, jobs done. This is their goal that they want to achieve, whether through a product or a service is a means. Jobs to be done segregates the product scenarios from the product or a solution. They're simply problem oriented. A jobs, uh, a jobs to be done can be functional social or emotional. For example, uh, if you look at the left, left customer don't want a quarter inch drill, uh, but they what they ask for is a quarter inch hole. Similarly, uh, the example on the right, sim uh, when we are hungry, we do not just need to feed ourselves. We make decisions based on various functional, emotional and social factors that change according to circum uh, circumstances. Uh, imagine choosing a restaurant. You may you may uh, make different choices depending on whether it is a romantic appointment, a business meeting, or a family lunch. You're always the same person, and yet you have different needs and expectations. So you hire the product or the service that helps you get the job done. Uh, so how do we discover the jobs to be done? First, it is important to put down our hypo uh, our hypothesis about what you think uh, is the jobs to be done for a user. Secondly, uh, when we start interviewing the users, we can validate those with the users itself. Sometimes through the user interviews, we can define our jobs to be done or find new ones as well. We can ask users during the interview what jobs they are trying to get done or what goals they are trying to achieve currently through their product. What defines success on their job? Why are they using the current products? Uh, this would help us getting answers from users about the jobs to be done. These are some additional uh, examples uh, of the jobs to be done on the left, which irrespective of the solution, it is achieved with. 
on the right we have how those were achieved through various solutions jobs to be done is uh, for example over here jobs to be done is to ingest uh, medicine it could be done through either pills and slot, uh, shots or it could be done through uh, skin patches similarly uh, cleaning teeth is a job to be done it could be done either through manual brushing or it could be done through an automated brushing and so uh, so on and so forth uh, so we have identified the target persona we are going to interview uh, we have defined the platform through which we are going to interview the users uh, whether it's through surveys or one on one interviews where we have identified the goal of the interview and we have our hypothesis for the jobs to be done and the pain points ready written down now we are going to validate those uh, through the interviews and surveys and get to know the priorities for those for our users during the interview we will ask the users why any task is important for them how important it is for their role what is the frequency of those tasks and lastly how painful uh, painful it is or in other words how satisfied they are with their current experience of doing those tasks or the jobs to be done after every interview you should debrief uh, with the team on what are the findings what new jobs to be done were discovered with the users and what revisions you need to be, uh, do for those based on the user feedback we accordingly refine our questions for our next interviews um some guidance for the interviews uh, is uh, always interview the actual user persona and not someone who works closely with those users or just know uh, about their work proxy personas could make some assumptions and you might not get an opportunity to discover the latent needs in that case uh secondly ask open ended questions what why how uh, uh, and how questions if you ask leading questions there might be a confirmation bias in the answers with the users giving a yes no answers uh, answers for uh, your questions which might be um, which might mi mislead your product discovery uh you should interview at least 5 to 10 users per user persona to get a complete picture of their pain points and challenges La lastly please allow sufficient time for the users to answer the questions please block the meeting in advance to the users with a clear agenda uh optionally you could also partner with uh, someone in your team who could you know help you with the note taking uh, or you could uh, and you could like take turns switching your roles uh, of the interviewer as well as the note taker so how do we uh, once we have identified uh, the various jobs to be done how do we prioritize the uh, right customer problems to solve for through your product so once we have a good understanding of our users through defining target segments defining customer personas and interviewing our users we will prioritize what are the problem areas we need to address for our customers so as shown in this figure this is a graph for jobs to be done uh, plotted uh, for job importance versus the product satisfaction you will take all of the jobs to be done we identified on the scale of how important that jobs uh, to be done is versus how satisfied uh, fight the users are with the current solution so on the uh, uh, on the top is the over uh, overserved area uh these are jobs to be done which are relatively less important uh but users are very satisfied with the current solution this is an overserved area even on the top right even if the jobs to be done is eight on the importance but users are highly satisfied with the current solution for that um, particular task so even if we make a new th uh, new uh, product thinking that this is a high roi area it would be hard to get a product market fit over here and how hard to make the users switch to this new product even if the product is very good the next is the uh, served right area which is uh, again uh, less than 5 on the importance uh, or like uh, relatively lesser on the important but it is still users are still fairly satisfied with the Uh, solutions they have the next is the underserved area on the bottom right is it is a area where we have the jobs to be done with the relatively higher importance 
but the solutions that are there currently are not uh, non satisfactory this is an underserved product area and this is where we need to focus to solve for the user problems there are multiple ways to prioritize what problems to solve for but if we follow this approach we will avoid for the for solving for the uh, product areas which are already very well served for uh, with the existing uh, products and solutions uh finally a little bit about going uh, going about solving the prioritized problems uh how do you go about solving customer problems always follow a design thinking process uh number one ideate uh second is prototyping and third is testing you can do this in loop number one ideate so brainstorm with the right people go wide first and then narrow down the solution approach uh prototyping show your ideas get feedback and iterate fastly it does not have to be a pretty uh, a pretty uh, uh high fidelity mock up but just uh, need to be clear to the user to understand like how you are going about it you could uh, you could use a low fidelity mock up like in balsamic or uh, figma to start collecting user feedback uh, from the end users directly the third is test try it out uh, show future uh, users to identify strengths and challenges in a uh, proposed solution uh, failure is totally okay but iterate and go back to the step one after that uh, you could also use some uh, pocs like very uh, small mvps to uh, quickly launch to the users and get uh, to collect feedback uh and then finally set your okrs before launching the products so that uh you could track their progress just uh, get customer feedback once you start uh, launching your mvps and constantly uh, constantly uh, monitor the metrics and usage you could use the arms metrics acquisition activation retention and monetization or you could go by the heart metrics happiness engagement adoption retention and uh, finally the ta task success so this was all uh, about how to prioritize the right problems to solve uh, i will do a quick recap uh, number 1 being customer centric means that a business faces the customer at the center of everything it does it's a strategy that prioritizes understanding the customer's uh, needs and tailor its products accordingly by doing so companies have been able to build strong brand loyalty generate revenue and create a competitive advantage in the industry understanding your customers is essential to building a successful product by identifying your target uh, target audience creating customer personas and conducting customer service and interviews you can gain valuable insights into the needs and preferences of your customers and use that information to create products that truly meet their needs it is important to put down our hypothesis about the pain points and jobs to be done for a user users use products to achieve their goals and do the jobs to be done a product or a service is just a means defining jobs to be done helps us to be problem oriented and segregates our, uh, our product scenarios from the solutions we are uh, we choose uh, when we start interviewing the users we can validate those jobs to be done with the users sometimes through the user interviews uh, we can define our jobs to be done or find new ones as well Finally, we prioritize which jobs to be done. We want to focus on for solving for our product, uh, which is an underserved area, basically the most important and where the users are most uh, dissatisfied with their current experience of the product. Uh, thank you, everyone, for listening to me. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to uh, reach out to me on LinkedIn or through email. Thank you.